Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make normal sized nerdy things, and today I'm gonna make a knife. But not just any old knife, no, this knife is gonna have a face. Of course, before I make a face, I need to make a body, or in the knife making world, a handle, which I'll make out of a length of the highest quality mahogany dowel that was within reach of my desk. Now it is a bit too thick, so before I start adding clay, I want to flatten the front and the back, which can be easily achieved using this fancy cheese grater I found at a garage sale. To help the clay adhere to the wood, I'll paint on a thick layer of bacon bond, then get to building up the body of the handle. I'll start by wrapping the surface in a thin layer of clay, making sure to press out any air bubbles before they form, then I can start adding the hot dog bun sides until I've built up a nice rounded handle shape. The bottom of knifey has a slightly rounded pommel which I'll make by layering and blending a couple flat worms of clay until I've got a nice smooth transition towards the base. Then I can move on to making the leather wrap around the grip. To make the leather wrapping, I'll start with a big ball of cos clay that I can then roll into an extra long, extra wormy wormy dealy. Then this extra long wormy dealy gets introduced to my pasta machine and passed through until my extra long wormy dealy becomes an extra long fettuccine dealy. Finally, once I've got a one to one grayscale replica of a tapeworm, I can start to wrap it around the grip of my sentient knife. I want this to look pretty haphazard, so I'll pull some sections tighter to make the wrap thinner, loop it around all willy-nilly so it looks pretty wonky, then I can clean up the edges, bake it to lock it in place, and get to work adding the head. Like any master knife maker will tell you, whenever you're adding a head and face to your knife, it's important to consider proper balance and weight distribution. Once it's been properly balanced, I can mark out where my mouth will sit, then start to gouge it out and build up the cheeks. A couple of slightly tapered wormy dealies attached to the top and bottom will be my upper and lower lips, which I'll then blend into the face. Now on a traditional knife, the lips and teeth are off in the focal point, so it's worth taking a little extra time to make sure they look correct. Of course, with this specific style of stabber, the real focal point will be on my oversized, slightly wonky eyes. I'll make these by scrunching up a ball of aluminium foil, rolling it nice and round, then duplicating it by way of aggressive shaking. These little guys then get a thin layer of clay, and that's my eyeballs finished and ready to be popped into place on the knife. Once they're nice and secure, I can wrap a wormy dealy around the eyes to help blend them in with the rest of the face, as well as add some eyelids to help give the knife a bit of character. With the eyeballs in place, I can start to refine the shape of the face, building up the jowl so the head's a bit fatter, highlighting the separation between the chin and the lower lip, and doing some final blending to remove any of the outstanding tool marks. Then once everything's been given an initial silicone shaper smoothing, I'll give the whole face a once over with some isopropyl alcohol to remove the last of the fingerprints and tool marks before getting to work jamming some big toothy teeth in place. I pre-bake these off camera to make pressing them into the gums a bit easier and a little bacon bond will help them stick to the fresh clay, then some teeny tiny worms of clay will fill in the gaps. Otherwise, with the structure finished, I can get to work adding the surface detail, starting with some lines and textures on the lips, then a whole bunch of holes poked around the neck. These holes then get filled with teeny tiny balls of clay that get blended and smoothed into the skin until I'm left with an itchy, bumpy, dry shaved 5 o'clock shadow. Otherwise, it's time to set the handle aside and get to work on the stabby part. I'll start by freehanding a wonky knife template on a sheet of extra thick cardstock. Then I can slowly and carefully cut my template out.
Then I could admire just how my freehand template is before finding a much better one on the internet. A couple test stabs later and I'm ready to start building. I'm gonna be using extra firm cosplay for the blade since I know how clumsy I am and if I made this out of regular old super scopey, I'd snap the brittle clay blade within a minute of finishing the sculpture. Cosclay is nice and flexible, so it should be a lot more forgiving. I'll add the chopped up chunks of clay to my pasta machine and keep running them through until I'm left with a nice thick pasta sheet of grey clay that I can then transfer my template onto. And it's just a case of cutting the shape of the blade out by following the template making sure to carve the fuller out on both sides before tossing the blade in the oven to cure the clay. However, once the clay had cured, I realized that my flexible clay was perhaps a tiny bit too flexible. So instead of clay, I think I'll just use some wood. This is Obesh, which is a soft hardwood that's perfect since it's easy to carve with a knife and the board happens to be the perfect thickness for my blade. So using another internet template that I printed out and glued on both sides of the wood, I can carefully cut out the shape. Then using a file, I can bevel the back side of the blade before turning to some sandpaper and tape to sharpen the edge. I'll carve out the fuller using a chisel, then refine the shape of the ball stylus before giving everything a light sanding with a high grit to try and remove the paper and give me as smooth a surface as possible. Finally, I can press the blade into the top of my handle and I'm left with the most unsettling unicorn that ever existed. Then I can pop the blade out which leaves me with a lovely indent that should be the perfect fit for the blade later. Then it's into the oven for a final bake and we're ready to start adding some color. The handle will eventually be red and brown so to make my life a little easier I'll start by blasting the body with a white primer while the blade itself will be predominantly chrome which tends to cover better with a black primer. Now to make the blade extra shiny, I'm gonna use this little bottle of chrome. I clearly didn't sand my blade smooth enough, which means I'm left with the grain being sorta of visible afterwards, but for half-assing this part of the project, I think it turned out pretty okay. After a few thick coats, I ended up with a very smooth, very shiny finish that didn't actually work for what I wanted, so I ended up sanding the mirror finish back until I was left with a flatter metallic finish in the center. Then I could add a bit of dirty black wash to the middle so that I'm left with some lovely sheeting and pitting. Otherwise, the blade is finished, so it's time to paint the body red. I started by using a deep blood red wash, but found that for the back of the body it was a bit too streaky, so a few coats of lighter reds give my body a nice multi-toned, somewhat fleshy red appearance. Then I can paint the leather wrap around the handle with a light brown, followed by a heavy coat of dark brown wash. This will add a bit of variation to the color of the leather and seep into the cracks giving me a bit of shading, then once that's had a chance to dry, some aggressive dry brushing with a light brown will add some weathering to the leathering, and I can get to work painting the teeth with a gross sepia wash. Last but not least, I'll use a ball stylus to make some big black pupils in not quite the center of my eyes. Then I'll give both the eyes a thick coating of UV resin to ensure maximum discomfort during handling. Finally, a dollop of hot glue into the coin slot up top and I can fix the blade to my handle. Otherwise, a few quick practice stabs, and we are all finished here, and on to the glamour shots. Step, step, step. Noise.
As always, a massive thank you to the fine folk over on Patreon who continue to support the creation of whatever the hell happens to come to my mind each week, and a very special thank you to my newest patrons, David Lai, 22 Hemi 22, Frosty Balls, Natalie, Dana Ziv, Luby Lou, Average Joe, Chef Guy, Santa Gravy, Sterling Madelet, Zero Jupiter 7360, Sophia Bu, Julianne Ruffles, Xavier Lynch, Mark and Zara, Mexorcist, I Love You Sam Lachlan, Andrew Maruco, and Edward Davis. You are the fleshy red face that supports the shiny wooden blade that is this channel. This week the channel hit 1 million subscribers and you'd better believe that's the neatest damn thing I've ever heard. So thanks for that, you guys are the tits. I wasn't sure how to end this video and I was just going to make a joke about not posting a new video for the rest of the year but that seems kind of lazy. So instead I'll just cut to black in the middle of this